We are mock drafting. It's March 17th, free agency. Well, the first week is done. Combine's done. So we're getting into to go time for the mock draft. We're here with a two-round mock draft. Superflex, non-tight end premium. <clears throat> we'll probably do a tight end premium one here soon. Uh, just for, for people that are in the tight end premiums. Um, and yeah, we're just going to jump right into it. Dad. Um, Happy St. Patty's got, Day. Yeah, I got some kind of green on, you know. Oh, um, uh, no, I don't. I got my Detroit Red Wings. Uh. <laughs> you got you to gotta change that up. Uh, um, I do. So. Yeah, we are using landing spot, so I will leave the link to the... Uh, the draft that we're using, it was made on March 11th, so I think right before free agency. But a lot of these spots make sense for how free agency played out. Um, and we'll kind of talk about it as we go through. And I'm going to do something a little different with the first pick. We're going to go odds and evens. I'll be odds. I, you know, Not that I would necessarily do it this way, but I think it could play out this way um, in your drafts. So I'm going to do Marvin Harrison number one. Uh, in the first, even in a super flex. He goes to the Cardinals at the fourth pick. Again, from the vibes I'm getting, this is a big possibility. So uh, kind of a shock there, but now you have your choice of quarterback, Dad. Yeah, kind of makes it easier for me. So, um, yeah, we do yeah, the I mean, so-called, you know, the Bears. <laughs> yeah, so today's the 17th. So yesterday, the Bears, this is a strange thing. The Bears, without checking this guy out medically, without having any kind of workout with Caleb Williams. They basically just went all in on him, as far as I could tell yesterday, by just kicking Justin Fields to the curb, man. So, yeah. Yeah, he's on the Steelers. and But, I mean, Caleb Williams in this mock draft, obviously he's going number one overall to the Bears. Also, the Bears are stacking that offense you got dj moore keenan allen to throw to cole Komet and gerald everett two good tight ends you got deandre swift roshan johnson cleo herber in the backfield they could still theoretically take a receiver at uh what 108 or 9 i don't know if they will now that they got keenan allen but they could if aroma dunes is sitting there so yeah i think he's kind of the he's kind of set himself apart as the clear-cut top quarterback but i still think there's an argument and i'm going to take Jaden daniels here in this mock draft, I think it was 102 to the Commanders. I like that spot for him. You got, um, you know, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson. Uh, you know, you got a couple good running backs in Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler as a pass catcher. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I think Jaden Daniels with his rushing ability, there's still an argument to him being the number one quarterback. So, Dad, when you know your pick, let me know and I'll make it for you because you're not going to be able to uh, select it there. But yeah, this is kind of the top three, in, in my opinion, still the tier one. Harrison, <clears throat> Marvin Harrison, Caleb Williams, and Jaden Daniels. Any of those three, I can see being an argument to go number one overall or one over the other. So, um, who are you thinking here? Again, super flex. Yeah. Um, wow. I guess if I was number four and, I, and this is what's presented to me, you know, I'm going to, I guess it's going to be Drake May. That, that, I'm not sure that would be my preference, but I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Are you between be... two guys? What's that? Are you kind of between two guys, or? Well, like yeah, you're... that or, um, uh, you know, neighbors or a Dunze, I guess. So. Yeah. I, I mean, be between three guys, so. Yeah, but, um, well, yeah, you can do it how you would do it, or how you think it's going to play out, or. You think um, Drake may? Um, neighbors. All right. Malik Neighbors. I mean, I don't hate it. He's, I think he's right up there with Marvin Harrison Jr. Like, it's funny. We think, ah, he's the wide receiver too. It's like, he's still going to be potentially a top five pick, which not many receivers get top five pick draft capital. It's just crazy that there's two of them, you know? Um, he would be the number one receiver in, in a lot of drafts, people are saying. So uh, maybe every draft in the last six, seven years besides – like the Jamar Chase one, you you know, neighbors would be number one. So he goes uh, to the Giants here at the 106. He's the clear cut number one um, target for, for Daniel Jones, at least for another year. So, yeah, I don't hate it. I definitely don't hate it. Um, yeah, if this plays out, man, it's tough 
So Drake May is going to the Patriots. I know people hate that, uh, but they are a new Patriots team. So we got to keep that in mind. Like you've mentioned, they could be, it's not the Bill, Pel- Bill Belichick Patriots. Now they still don't have any weapons who they bring. Uh, Devontae, uh, Kendrick Bourne. And didn't they bring someone else in? I don't even know if they did, but. Um, yeah, I think they, they, they did. I forgot who it was. So Their depth chart currently is. Kendrick Bourne, Demario Douglas, and Juju as wide receiver one, two, and three. So I don't think they brought anyone else in. I know they got Antonio Gibson as a running back. Pass yeah, catcher, maybe but... that's yeah, that's 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 <sighs> nothing to write home. I mean, Antonio Gibson's okay. Um, yeah, and I like Kendrick Bourne and Demario Douglas as like wide receiver twos or threes at best, you know. Um, <clears throat> but. It, it's pretty clear cut to me. This is how they are going to take a quarterback. I will take Drake May. Still think he could be the best quarterback in this draft. He's, again, you go to a lab and you create a quarterback. It, it usually comes out in terms of the size, the mobility, the arm. It comes out with like Drake May. So Gabe Williams is a little short, but that doesn't mean that much. I'm just saying like the ideal mold of a quarterback. Jaden Daniels is a little slight. Um, but yeah, I would take Drake May here. Um might be a rough first year for sure. It might be, uh, might be some difficult stuff, but um, I, I just have hope that you know they can turn it around over the course of a year or two. So you're up at the 106. Still some uh, really nice options here. Um, yeah, I gotta go with Dunze. Yeah, He's I don't need it. That's he seems, seems like the best player available. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't hate it. There's probably someone I actually would take over him at that spot. And maybe even over, like, well, I don't know. Um, Adunze is awesome. He goes to the Jets, which is a really good spot for him. I was just looking at, actually, this morning, the Jets' depth chart. It's like, man, they have no one else besides Garrett Wilson. Like, that's kind of concerning um, if I'm the yeah, Jets. Yeah, the like, Lazard the Lazard thing and, you know, and who they start with last year and he retired. Uh Corey Davis was there, Michael yeah. Hardman. It, yeah, yeah, it looked like they, you know, they were stocked at receiver. Now they, now they have nothing, so. Yeah, I mean, you look at their depth chart, and it's Garrett Wilson, Jason Brownlee, and Xavier Gibson. Jason Brownlee was an undrafted rookie free agent last year. Um, Xavier Gibson was an undrafted um, player in 20. They were both undrafted. You're talking about two undrafted rookie you know rookie receivers going into their second year lazard's still there sure yeah it's it's tough you know tyler Kai, like yeah they really need another weapon whether it's bowers or adunze or neighbors so i i like that i probably would have taken jj mccarthy there though uh, to be honest i mean he goes in this draft 11th overall to the vikings <clears throat> i think you can make an argument if you want to take him over drake may over Malik yeah. Neighbors, like uh, I actually, uh, yeah, I'd actually thought about that. So um, I've heard, I don't know. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of chatter about Drake May, and I try to filter the bullshit out and listen to people like Kurt Warner and other other people who know quarterbacks, and they just say, "Ah, eh, there's some things there." That doesn't mean the guy can't get better. I mean, let, for, you know, uh, let's Drake face May, you mean? What's that? <clears throat> for McCarthy or, or May? No, Drake May. Uh-huh. Drake May. Sorry, they're not going to change my mind on McCarthy, but um, I'm glad my I'm glad my team isn't in line to draft him. But, but you know, the problem is you, you draft these guys early and you just plug them right in, expect them to play, and yeah. some of them ain't ready. But anyway. Yeah, I, I just, again, like, I think you can make an argument in this specific draft and how it goes as McCarthy is the 104. If you like the landing spot of the Vikings more, which I kind of do, often to Kevin O'Connell, again, I keep saying it, Nick Mullen, Joshua da- Josh Dobbs, uh, Kirk Cousins, all these guys are putting up top 12 quarterback seasons. Like, you're throwing the ball to Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, Aaron Jones, TJ Hawkinson when he's healthy. Like, it's hard to pass that up. Like, they have the weapons, they have the coach. And now they just plugged in a quarterback. So um, look what, I think there's a chance. Go ahead. Yeah, look what's happened to the 2021 uh, quarterback draft class. Yep. They're all yep. they're all kicked to the curb. And they're, 
unless unless there's some big changes, you know, there's um, they're going to be backups there at least for this year. You know, it doesn't it doesn't mean guys can't change, but yep. <coughs> um, so now we have two drafts under our belt, and and this is the top seven picks. A little bit different order, maybe, but this is the top seven. <coughs> picks. I think if you have a top seven pick, you should be feeling pretty happy there. So, Dad, you're up at the one hundred eight. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Brock Bowers. In this draft, he goes 15th overall to the Colts. Good spot there. He could be the number two option pretty easily, actually, behind Pittman. So I don't I I love that. I mean, I love that landing spot for him. You know, Josh Downs is there, sure, but Brock Bowers is on another level. And yeah, it's non tight end premium, but we're talking about Bowers potentially being like a generational tight end and uh Kelsey like, you know, so um, if that's the case, then he's definitely worth that that value. And a tight end premium, do you think he goes over? If say this same scenario plays out, it's a two point per reception for tight ends. Do you oh, think man, he goes above go like early. a dunes? He's gonna go earlier, yeah. He, yeah, I think one hundred six. Yeah, latest. yeah, I think one hundred six at the latest there. Um, now we're in an interesting spot here. There's two, two. There's three more receivers that are drafted in the first round. All pretty good landing spots with good offenses and good quarterbacks. I'm just going to take my favorite of the three as where we sit right now. And that's actually Xavier Worthy, um, who goes uh, 28th overall to the Bills. So nice landing spot there. Um, I like it. Um, I've been a Worthy guy even before the, the combine and stuff. I, you know, I see that he was dominating at Texas as an 18 year old um, just put up good numbers his three years in college i loved his route running and obviously he has the speed he is one of these smaller guys you know the tank dell molds of like pretty lights the guys that are kind of new to succeeding in the nfl and 15 years ago these guys would not even be considered first round picks but uh the nfl has changed so i'm going to xavier worthy going to 28th overall to the bills again i think he can kind of step in and be that number two option and maybe take over as the number one later in the season or, or next year if, if, you know, Diggs is uh, is done. So um, I like that. So there's uh, still two first-round receivers, Dad. Are you going to head that direction or are you going to go someone else? Um, yeah, probably. Um, I'm going to go with the uh, – what is it? Adonai Mitchell there to the Chief, yeah. you know. He's – Projected to be drafted by the Chiefs, so I think I want to, I want to go that direction. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, another he's a fast guy. Though no, first round um, dynasty, yeah, yeah. I mean, he gets first round draft capital. He goes to a really good team in the Chiefs. They did sign Marquise Brown, which was before, uh, after this mock draft was made. I don't think that changes too much, though. So. Uh, maybe you don't get a huge production his first year, but a lot of people like Adonai Mitchell as as a um, you know top four or five receiver in this draft class. So um, I think he has the tools to put it together. He's super fast. He was like, I think he was the fastest before Brian Thomas and Xavier Worthy ran. So he's runs in the four threes as well. Good size. Um, so it's hard, tough to argue that. Um, I'll probably just go, even though. Yeah, I'll, I'll go the the last first round receiver here, which is Brian Thomas Jr. Going to the Cowboys at 24th overall. Actually, he was drafted before Worthy and Adonai Mitchell. I think there's a good chance that Brian Thomas is actually a um, a top 15 pick. And I've been saying this all along. Like, I don't know if he has the ceiling, at least the first couple of years, to be a number one overall receiver, dominate top, you know, clear cut number one for a team. He just seems perfect as like the one B option. And he goes to the Cowboys, and I think he complements C.D. Lamb really well. He's going to be a downfield guy. He runs a, a 4-3-3. He has good – he's like 6-5 or whatever. He's good size. Um, so, like, I think he complements – he could be like the T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, essentially. And T. Higgins, we've seen be a top 12 to 15 fantasy receiver, even with Jamar Chase there. So, I, I love that spot for Brian Thomas. So, yeah, you round out the, uh, the first round real quick. Um I kind of see like the top eight being pretty set, right? Uh, I think Brian Thomas, if I had to choose anyone being, putting my money on someone being the ninth overall pick would be Brian Thomas. 
um, just kind of how the draft's playing out. You know, David Worthy, Adonai Mitchell could still be like second round picks, but in this mock, they weren't. Um, but yeah, you uh, you get to round out the the first round there. I'm going to pick a guy I think is going to be pretty interesting. That's uh, Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman. He's... So we're into the second round. All the first rounders have been taken. Keon Coleman. Um, this is where, in my opinion, so in this in this mock draft, there are one, two, re- two receivers drafted ahead of Keon Coleman, but there's about 12 picks that separate them. In my opinion, take who you really believe in in this range, right? Maybe don't reach for like a late third round guy versus an early second, but if you believe in Keon Coleman and you like his draft capital and landing spot over the couple other guys that were drafted ahead of him, then do it, you know? It feels much better when you hit on a guy that you believe in. And yeah, Keon Coleman has a lot of uh, intriguing. Uh, I kind of messed up the, uh, well, that's fine. We can just do it um, Do it opposite here. I meant to do a, uh, not a snake draft, but a, a linear draft. Um, so I but, heard a, a, an yeah, interesting um, combine workout. When they run the gauntlet, you know, which is they run in the width of the field and the guys are throwing to them left and right and um they i guess they got gps tracking on on these players and they track you know how straight they run you know because they're running on a line and last year the gps tracking the most uh, i wish i knew what the stat was straightest was puka nakua yeah yeah it was puka and this year, it's Keon Coleman. So, um, you know, so just kind of a interesting stat I heard uh, by one of, I think by Daniel Jeremiah or something like that. So I thought, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, and there's a lot of other, like, you know, people, the 40 yard is like everyone wants to see the 40 yard dash. How often do NFL players run 40 yards? It's very, very little. Like running backs um, and wide receivers, maybe eight times in a year they're catching unless you're like Tyree kill like you're busting off a 40 50 yard run. how many right you know if you look up how many running backs ran for 40 plus yards um you're not going to get many so um 10 yard splits are good those uh, the gauntlet drill where you're actually uh catching passes and how fast you are yeah it's it's interesting because he ran what a four six one or something but then he's the fastest in that gauntlet drill it's kind of funny so yeah, I don't, I don't hate it. He did go to the Saints. I don't know if I mentioned that. So good spot too. Like they have Chris Olave and really nothing else. Um, so he could easily step in as the wide receiver too there. Um, good. I'll probably take. There is a quarterback that was drafted in the early second round, Bo Nix, going to the Raiders. Um, I think it's a decent landing spot. Maybe he sits for a year behind like a Gardner Minshew. Um, so I'll take Bo Nix at the 212. It's, well, it's the 201. I forgot to put it as a linear draft. So we're going we're going backwards here. But um, yeah, I mean, super flex again. Quarterbacks are just way too valuable. I'll take them over if there's if there's three wide receivers drafted in the early second and a quarterback drafted in the early second. I'm probably going to lean the quarterback, even though um, it's less likely that they hit. You know, as a second round quarterback. But I like the situation, Bo Nix. Maybe he can sit behind Minshew for a year or half a season, come in, and yeah, and we'll see with, with the Raiders. I don't know how good offensively they're going to be, but um, I'll take Bo Nix there going to uh, 44th overall to the Raiders. So you are up, Dad. Yeah, I'm going to take a guy that I like. Um, Kind of had my eye on. I think I'm kind of getting him in the right area. Um, that's Lad McConkey. Yes, indeed. And I'll put that pick for you because I don't think you can make it. There we go, Lad McConkey. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I like. Um, I kind of like uh this guy. You know, when you look at him at Georgia. <coughs> sorry about that. When you look at him at Georgia, you know his his stats are not going to blow you away. But geez, he he sure. He sure kind of makes plays. He, he, I know, I know his forty time is not great, but it's not. Um, he ran a four three nine. What is it? Four three nine. Yeah, I was surprised yeah. by it. Oh, that's outstanding. And um, 
And then, uh, yeah, I was kind of surprised. You know, I was going to, I thought it'd be like a four or five or something, but his route running and um, this guy ho hopefully gets drafted by the right team, you know, in the, in the real world. And, uh, and he can so in this produce, mock, so. real, yeah, this mock, he goes, he's the first pick in the second round. He goes to the Panthers. So I don't hate it. <clears throat> you know, they got, like he could be if he is good, he could easily be the best receiver there. Like it's Deontay's there, Deontay Johnson's there, uh, obviously Mingo and Thielen. But if McConkey's just the real deal, he's the best receiver on that team. So there's no like clear cut alpha there. Um, and I think he'd be really good for for Bryce Young. And he's one another one of those in the in the gauntlet drill that looks really really good, right? Um, so yeah, I, I like that for sure in line McConkey. Um, I'm gonna go. I think you could start thinking about running backs here. Obviously, um, there's there's two running backs in this mock draft that were drafted in the second round, both to, to good spot. Well, one of them to good spots. One of them probably not going to happen post free agency. Uh, but I'm going to actually still go another receiver here that I really like. That's Troy Franklin. Um, oh, he took my guy. He, yeah, right. he didn't ha he didn't have the best combine and stuff like that. But man, I just think this guy can really develop into an all around number one receiver more so than maybe there's a little bit more risk with him versus like a, a, a lad McConkey. I think lad McConkey has a pretty safe floor on what he's going to do. And, and there's always a ceiling of, of more. I think Troy Franklin has a higher ceiling, but maybe a lower floor um, even versus guys like a Brian Thomas potentially. So um, I really like Troy Franklin. He goes to the Colts here. Um, so we're talking about the Colts. They got Brock Bowers in the first round. So now you got Pittman Bowers, Franklin, so, and, and you're, Obviously, Anthony Richardson's not going to be throwing the ball 50 times a game. So, not the greatest, but we saw it with the uh, the Eagles that one year, right? They they really consolidated their passing game with Jalen Hurts to, to A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Goddard, right? And they could do – the Colts could do the same thing. Shane Steichen, obviously, was the offensive coordinator for the, the Eagles. So, if they consolidated it to these three guys, uh, kind of sucks for Josh Downs if you had shares in him. But, um, yeah, I'll take Troy Franklin here. So, Dad – you are up next. Um, trying to. Who who's the running back that got hurt? Oh, that's um, uh, Jonathan Brooks. He, oh, okay. Well, I don't want to take him. <laughs> yeah. At this at this point, you know, I guess. Um, and I'm sorry. What school did Trey Benson go to? It's FSU. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if I'm ready to. Um, Still a couple receivers drafted in the second round. Yeah, I might, I might go. Um, I'm gonna go Roman Wilson. Okay, Michigan Roman man. Wilson. Yep, Roman Wilson here. It gets an interesting spot. Um, gets drafted by the Eagles. Um, 53rd overall, so still second round capital. A lot of hype around him. He's also another one that ran in the four threes. Um, <clears throat> not a terrible spot. I mean, we'll see. Like, the Eagles could be very different next year. Like, I know they're kind of running it back a little bit. Hurts, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, daughter, you know, the head coach, all that stuff. They brought in Devontae Parker as kind of their wide receiver three. Um, <clears throat> but they could be very different in if they don't really, if they kind of, flare out again you know like aj brown could be gone or they got to pay Devonte smith and you know so there's there's a path for for owen wilson within a year to be pretty relevant in my opinion so I, I don't mind that um i will go running back here the first running back taken trey benson he's it's tough to know who the rb1 is i'm kind of leaning trey benson right now um good speed good size um you know He's not hurt like Jonathan Brooks is. Um, you're kind of probably going to get a wash here with with Jonathan Brooks. Um, but I like Trey Benson a lot. I think I'm kind of leaning him as my RB1, and he was the RB1 in the draft. And he goes to the Giants. So they did sign Devin Singletary, um, which isn't, um, you know, a death sentence or, or something like We know what Devin Singletary is right here. So Jonathan or Trey Benson could easily be the best running back on that team. So he's six foot one, two twenty. I think he runs in the four threes. So I, I like Trey Benson. Um, yeah, yeah he, as, as the RB one. 
I like him, except for he got hurt in November, I think. Didn't no, he? no, no. That's that's Jonathan Brooks. Oh crap! I get them mixed up. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Jonathan Brooks is the ACL guy who, um, in this draft, he goes to um, the Texans, which yeah. probably won't happen because they just signed Mixon. But this was pre, uh, pre yeah. agency. Yeah. They gave Mixon, gave Mixon a new contract too, man. Pretty, pretty healthy yeah. contract, I'd say. Yeah, I was surprised about that. Well, I, I think he's pretty good player if you ask me you know i think so too it's just one i don't feel like they had to um you know and he'll, he'll be 28 this year so that's kind of where we're getting close to the cliff i think uh, they for, for running backs yeah i think um they probably think they if they get a couple of years out of them that that'll be good so yeah i don't know the details either it could just be like a, a one year you can get out of it after a year but um so you thinking here you got still a receiver and a tight end yeah i'm gonna drafted. go the tight end uh jutavian sanders i think um especially if yeah. he's drafted by the bengals i, I would i yeah. think that would be a joe burrow he throws to the tight end you know not prolifically or anything like that but he doesn't ignore him so yeah my my um you know, Joe Burrow with the tight ends has basically been like it's it's been um, Uzama, uh, Hayden Hurst, and then last year was kind of like um, Tanner Hudson coming on. And basically, what they've every year under Joe Burrow, it's been like forty to fifty catches, five hundred yards, and some touchdowns. But that was with Chase Higgins and Boyd, and Boyd was the clear cut third option. He was a good receiver put up a couple thousand yards there but Boyd's gone I'm pretty sure I don't think he's officially gone but um he's probably going to be gone so like what if their third best option is now the tight end and the tight end gets a bump it gets seven eight hundred yards so I can see that I like Jatavian Sanders um a lot um I think uh you know I think uh he's the clear-cut tight end too in this draft class and he's pretty talented receiving tight end so uh, i like that a lot yeah it's tough here man we got i don't think it's gonna play out this way now that um the falcons <sighs> they brought in mooney um rondale moore obviously kirk cousins is there but there is a, a second round a high second round draft pick at receiver i can't really ignore it too much i'm not the biggest xavier Leggett fan the dude's a physical freak you know he's like dk metcalf in terms of his size and he's really fast he goes to the falcons here again i don't think it plays out that way but um if it does it's not the worst i guess like if he becomes the third option i guess or you know maybe the second option behind drake london or maybe he's just better than them than them i don't know but it's hard to ignore you know top 45 draft capital is, is pretty good in the nfl draft so I'll just take yeah. Xavier Leggett here at 43rd overall to the Falcons. Yeah, I think uh, just to comment on that is, you know, I'm not in love with a guy or anything like that, but um, it is it is hard to ignore, um, you know, a second round receiver, you know, drafted in the NFL. So, um, yeah, you know. Yeah, 100%. Oh, boy. Now I think it's easy for me. Um go with the the Michigan running back Blake Corum you know and yeah I'm uh I'm a homer and um go blue so hopefully he ends up in a good spot um I think the Cardinals yeah, probably went, wouldn't be a Cardinals. bad spot you know with uh James Connor and um uh, and company so um we'll see how it plays out yeah yeah he did go to the um like you said, Cardinals, uh, 66th overall, uh, which is fine. I think you get James Conner there one more year, and then it's kind of Blake Corum's backfield if he is the guy. So, um, you know, he'll, he'll probably – we'll see what he does his first year. But, you know, we're, we're getting into the mid to late second round. We're already – you know, it, it's tough to find guys here, but um, he probably doesn't do too much his first year. But James Conner also misses several games every year. And then you're talking about the number one running back for a potentially really good offense um, with Kyler Murray, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., 
um, Trey McBride. Now you're the you're the running back on that team. You could be scoring a lot of touchdowns. So um, I will also go running back. Um, a running back that I'm really high on that I think could be the best running back in this class, and that's Jalen Wright. Um, goes to the Chargers uh, at 69th overall. We know what the Chargers are going to do this year. They're going to run the hell out of the ball. They brought in Gus Edwards, but they're still going to run the ball 30 plus times a game. So um, Jalen Wright, I really like out of Tennessee. He has some, he didn't get used a whole lot, like heavy usage, but he has some underlying stuff that's really nice. And I think he could be the best running back. And I love that draft spot. By the way, going back to Blake Corman real quick, we're going to know a lot about, I think, Blake Corum, depending on what the Chargers do. So in the second round, if the Chargers take, uh, a running back <laughs> over a quorum. I think it tells us a little bit about quorum and same thing in the third round. If they take a running back and quorum still on the board and they don't take quorum, it's going to tell us a little bit about him. But um, obviously they didn't get the chance in this. I'm not sure track. that he's a second rounder, you know, and, um, mm-hmm. you know, and it'll be interesting to see if, if any running back gets drafted in the second round, I guess, I guess, you know, I've heard, Again, from reputable draft Knicks, you know, that it's hard it's hard to break out one of these running backs. They're all kind of really close together. So, you know, mm-hmm. to me, that means, you know, are they all going to be lumped in one round? You know, does a team, does a, does a team reach? There's some teams that need some running backs, you know, like the Dallas Cowboys. Does that mean they... They reach for one of these guys at the uh, the number two position. Chargers could use one, even though they have you know Gus the bus and and um, yeah. I think there's a few other teams that 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 need them, but so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it all pans out at the end of April. And <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So we got four more, three more picks here. Yeah, three more picks. Um, what are you thinking at the uh, the two ten? Yeah, I guess <sighs> this is where it starts getting a little. Uh, I don't want to say thin because some of these guys, you know, gotta do your homework. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna take uh, the Tez Walker guy. Yeah, wide receiver. Tez- Walker. Um, yeah, so in this draft, um, Tez Walker, uh, by the way, North Carolina catching passes from Drake May. Uh, in this draft, he goes uh, 73rd overall to the Lions, which is interesting. <clears throat> He's another one of those interesting ones where don't know exactly what to think of him, but he has some skills that you think he can develop into. And there's a spot there for the Lions. Um, there's a spot, um, you know, uh, Jamison Williams, we don't know yet. Is he going to be the clear cut number two? And they kind of need a second option, third, second, second option at receiver. So don't hate it there. Is that kind of what you're thinking with, with that pick? Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, like you said, there is a spot, um, for their number three receiver. Uh, that was Josh Reynolds. They haven't, they haven't signed him back. They've let him go. They did, um, uh, they did sign Donovan Peoples Jones, um, one year, two million bucks. So, but they're still. I mean, if they draft a guy in the third round, you know, they sh- they should uh, it should be a spot for him, you know, to compete for. So, hopefully, this guy, hopefully, he's there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one eleven. It's tough. I'm making. My last pick here, I, I kind of want to reach maybe a little bit, but <clears throat> take Michael Penix again. Oh, you took my guy. <laughs> All right, I'll let you take him. And no, I, no, I no, 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 that's no, I'll fine. Take, I'll take Jonathan Brooks. Um, still, okay. Still think he could be the best running back in this draft class now. He's the guy coming off the ACL. If he wasn't I coming agree. off the ACL, he'd be, coming up, he'd be the clear-cut, probably number one running back here. You're probably going to get a um, – a kind of a red shirt year from him this year, depending on where he goes. Now in this draft, he does go to the Texans. This was before the Texans signed um, Joe Mixon. So I don't really see that happening. I could see him going into the Cardinals. 
um, and kind of redshirting behind James Conner for a year, and that would be awesome. Uh, but I'll, I'll take Jonathan Brooks again. Still think he can be the top, the top guy. Yeah. So, yeah, last pick, uh, second round, I'd take Michael Penix. You yeah. know, I'll, the only the only thing I have to say is look how many quarterbacks were starting um, in the NFL By the way, last real quick, year. Pen- Penix goes uh, seventy six overall to the Broncos. So go ahead. Yeah, and maybe maybe he's Sean Payton's boy or something. But um, yeah, we know what kind of pass he can throw, and uh, hopefully he uh, fits in. Second round, second round, uh, third round. Yeah, but I'm talking about second round in this oh, dynasty really. draft. Yeah, okay, but yeah, yeah. no, no, you're right, and and it's a good it's a good reach. There's still a few. Um, players that were drafted ahead of him. Johnny Wilson, who I'm not really high on, going to the Patriots. Um, Malachi Corley, who I, I like. He goes to the Bears here. I don't see that happening with Keenan Allen being taken there. Maybe. I don't know. Like, Keenan Allen is older, so, um, you know, he could he probably won't do much his first year. But, uh, yeah, Marshawn Lloyd is another guy drafted in the third round. I really like at running back out of USC, going to the Raiders. Love that spot for him, you know. Um, so, there's some guys, Ricky Pearsall to the Steelers is interesting. You know, um, Jalen McMillan and Jalen Polk, the, wide res- uh, the Washington wide receivers, get pretty interesting spots. So, but yeah, I think you got to take a shot on the um, on the running back, or sorry, the quarterback there, uh, Michael Penix. It just if he hits, it's too valuable. And, and who's the quarterback for the Broncos right now? It's, it's just Jared Stidham. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Any any um any last thoughts here? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six quarterbacks going in the first two rounds, which is pretty awesome. You know, a couple tight ends, a lot of receivers, and, and four running backs. So I think that's pretty fair. I think that's pretty indicative of how it's going to turn out um, in the draft. So any kind of any last words here? No, I'm just um, I'm kind of looking at our our list and. Um... Kind of um, just kind of mentally thinking, you know, I'm gonna have a couple dynasty drafts, so you know how this kind of shakes out, and um, you know, I wanna, I wanna definitely capitalize on a couple of guys, you know. Yeah. One dynasty pretty- draft, I I have the tenth pick, so I wanna make, I wanna make that guy, uh, wanna make that guy stick <laughs> yeah and it, it's it's pretty awesome i mean you're looking at um you know jonathan brooks was drafted at the 211 he was a second round pick in this draft so you're still potentially finding you now he fell a little bit but you're potentially finding second round picks I, I feel like by last year by this time late second we were already drafting guys drafted in the third round um even earlier like a chan um i think he was a he was a third round pick like there wasn't a whole lot of um good value mid to late second round in, in last year's draft in terms of where they were the draft capital. So, you know, you're still getting Xavier Leggett. We're talking about a top 45 pick being drafted in the middle of the second round. So um, that was Jonathan Mingo last year and he was a fringe first round pick. So just kind of shows you the depth of this, um, of this draft rookie draft class and NFL draft. And um, yeah. We'll be uh, putting out more, probably a tight end premium next, just to see how that changes. It's not going to change a whole lot, but we'll obviously bump up Bowers and Jatavian Sanders. So uh, we will be back. We will be back with that. And uh, yeah, enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. We will catch you guys all next time.